Hey guys, hope you're well, I'm back with another video. Today we'll be doing 100 bell runs. I've put a little twist on this one though and decided to clear every single monster on my way to him as well. Basically everything from the waypoint onward. A quick preview of my gear, build and stats will be shown in the background. Please note the geese charm in this one is a new one. Also I kept swapping the coat to arms with a go dagger before killing bell for a little extra mf. I'd like to thank you for being here and for all of the recent activity within the comment section. I appreciate the suggestions you keep giving me and I've implemented some of them in this one. Your support as always is greatly appreciated. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to support the channel, please consider doing so as well as liking and sharing the video, it does make a huge difference. I hope you enjoyed this one. Without any further delay, see you in the comment section. And now, let's jump right in. It's still run number one when on my way to Bale we get a neat budget belt for casters. It's the Gloom Trap. The same run, Bale drops a max lifesteal on Dario's visage as well as Elder's deception, with the minimum possible light res. A great start of this session. Next run, we get our first skewer. It gives one to shapeshifting skills. This is still the second run when an unlikely event occurs. On Dario's visage twice in a row from the same boss. Unfortunately, once again it's not an ethereal one, and this time, it's with minimum life steal. We also get Dracos with max on everything except defense, but they are ethereal, so it's a bummer. If only it was the other way around, we would have gotten two great items. Next two runs got us nothing, but on the fifth run, on our way to level 3, we get a very nice drop, the Herald of Zakarum with 8% of perfect defense. This is run 6 and we find a small charm worth keeping, which gives 6 to MF and 2 to mana. Then on run 7 we find unique feral clothes that also happen to drop on run 73. They are the fire lizard's talents. Run 16, we get Thunder Strokes that roll extremely poorly, with only 2 to Java and Spear skills. We jump to run 25 when Bale drops an IK Helm with 3 of Perfect Magic Find. This roll 25 to 40 MF. This is why I try to open all chests and tombs I see throughout running. One run later, we get rewarded with a Bone Flame that also rolls with the maximum of 3 to Necro skills. On run 32, we get a set vortex shield, it's quite rare to find and part of Griswold's set for paladins. The same run, within the throne of destruction, we also find a hellslayer axe. Run 34, a vampire fang belt drops after killing a couple of bats, it's funny that they dropped this specific item. On the next run, Bao gives us one of the top items of this session, it's Arcane's Vower that also gives the max possible of 2 to all skills, not easy to come by. One more run later, we find a Hellcrack Crossbow, on top of the physical damage it also gives extra elemental damage. On run 37, we get a unique Thunder Maw, which may be Earth Shifter or the Cranium Basher. Fortunately, it's a basher in this case. This item is extremely hard to find, of course an ethereal one would have been sick, but I'm grateful for this one as well, I don't think I've ever found it before. A few moments later, we get goblin toes from Bale. 
Paired together with the Cranium Busher, we get a total of 100% crushing blow in just one run, and only within the space of a minute. We have some trouble picking this one up, it was late at night and I got stuck there for a moment. We get a nice cure in the end though, it gives one to fire skills for sorcerers. On run 48 we get Movina's armor from Bale. We also find it on run 76 and I might as well show you this. On run 69 we found another part of this set, it's Movina's belt. Run 51 gives us two items, a useful staff that gives high level teleportation charges that can be used in the offhand if necessary, as well as a pair of soul drainers. Run 53 we find another amazing and extremely rare item, it's Griswold's Caduceus, that also rolls with 4 open sockets. This is a great weapon if you wish to try the bear source build out, and it doesn't drop often at all not to mention with 4 sockets. However, it did drop for me one more time during these runs, the second one rolled with 3 sockets though. On the next run, right next to the waypoint, we find Alder's boots, that also happen to roll with the max possible fire res. We managed to get a second pair as well, that rolled one off perfect. Another run later, Bale drops Verdungo's belt and a wizard spike. The wizard spike actually dropped 3 times in total in this area. Run 63, we obtain a mid rune that is worth mentioning. It's a Mao rune. On the next run a great base for paladins that dropped with 4 open sockets, as well as one of perfect, 44 to all res, almost impossible to find any better for the spirit rune ward. In the same run another great find, this time a 7mf small charm that also gives some stamina. I still need many more of these. Run 71, we loot unique chain gloves, mine are with 39mf and I'm still looking for perfect ones, but these roll poorly. We skip to run 76 in order to secure Taurasha's weapon. This one is good for a fire source. Next drop I wanna show was on run 78, we find useful gloves, the laying of hands. Approaching the end of the session is run 82 and we get a pair of unique battle gauntlets, the lava gout. The only unique amulet we get from this high level area drops on run 88. I have high hopes, but unfortunately it's a low roll Saracen's chance. It's now run 95 and we get another pair of unique gloves, this time the Goo Hide. They provide a lot of perks against undead enemies. We finish with a decent weapon drop on our way to Bale. It's Baranar's Devil Star. Similar to the Colossus Crossbow, it provides additional elemental damage and may sometimes be found useful. During these runs, 7 Essences of Destruction in total dropped. A recap of all the items we found during the session will now be displayed on your screen. I'd also like to mention that, depending on what monsters had spawned, these runs took between 9 and 11 minutes each. I did them within about 4 or 5 days and invested a total of about 17 hours. It's a bit tough doing too many of these in a row. I hope this information is helpful to you, I've also started showing a quick peek at the duplicate items I find during these runs. Please let me know whether you find this format better, I've added these improvements thanks to you and the comments you keep leaving. I would appreciate it if you keep doing this so the content may keep improving and is always to your liking. If you want to chat for a bit, I'll be available for you in the comment section. In the next video I'll show you the results of 500 Andario runs. 
I'll be running with slightly over 650 MF, and as usual, all of my runs so far have been done on player 1 difficulty, Hell Online. I can't wait to show you this one. I'm still grinding, but halfway there, I've already gotten some items I'm sure you'd like. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I'll see you in the next one.